Mr. Khan, can you explain your decision to order the TEPCO workers to remain at the plant when TEPCO wanted them removed? Well, the first thing which happened at 3 a.m. on March the 15th, the um, Minister for the Economy came to my office, came to me, and he said that the TEPCO headquarters had requested to him for the workers from the deity site to be withdrawn from their positions. However, then, considering what could happen on the site if all of TEPCO's technicians from on-site were withdrawn, considering the fact that there were six reactors and four spent fuel pools at the deity site itself, this would mean the potential of well, being losing control in completely of this whole site. Even if the self-defence forces, for example, were sent into the location, sent into the site, of course they are not trained to deal with nuclear operations. So with no TEPCO staff, no techno TEPCO technicians on site, this would in effect mean actually abandoning all of these six reactors and seven pools on the Daiichi site, which would mean in turn that the worst case scenario could actually begun or become reality. And so despite the, of course, huge risk that was there, I decided that it was very important to keep the technicians and the TEPCO workers on site for as long as possible to try and deal with the situation. So I called in the president of TEPCO to tell him this, and also I physically went myself to the headquarters of TEPCO at 4 a.m. to directly tell this to the officials of the company. At the same time, I also decided it was important to make sure that uh, decision-making and information could be done properly between TEPCO and the the government to set up a joint control centre. I set this up within the TEPCO headquarters but brought in Minister Kaida and also my advisor Mr Hosono in place to be permanently within this control centre to work with TEPCO and the government together to try and deal with the situation. Who is responsible for this catastrophe, for the meltdown at the reactors? First of all, I believe that the fact that all of the electricity was lost through this earthquake and tsunami, but no preparation or no consideration of such accidents or such things happening and no preparations being made for this under the assumption that no accidents could happen and the technical side of things from this, including both the facilities and also the staffing situation and the lack of ensuring the full safety of the plant, but still continuing to increase nuclear power plants and the situation. The responsibility for this lies on the state of Japan and on the government, including me. There is also responsible on TEPCO as the operator, in fact, of the site for not predicting, not expecting, not planning for such an accident to happen. But politically, of course, the responsibility lies on me, the government at the time, and also the previous government and TEPCO in charge of the plant. There have been questions about another of the owners of the nuclear reactors uh, having higher levee walls to protect the reactors. Uh, here you have TEPCO very close to uh, those that are regulating them. Who, in fact, was in charge? So the location of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is originally actually on a high level, originally 35 meters above water. But what happened when the nuclear power plant was constructed is that this soil was actually cut down and built lower. So the plant was actually, and the six reactors were actually in the end, built at a height of 10 meters above sea level. And so this fact, the fact that although it had originally been 35 meters, but it was changed to be built at 10 meters, if this had not happened, if it had stayed at the original 30 or even 20 meters, then even in the case of a large tsunami, this may have been high enough to prevent this kind of damage. And so the problem here is the fact that no kind of measures have been put in place expecting or saying that not, no such accident, no such disaster could ever happen. And in regards to the second part of your question, in regards to regulations, uh, the safety standards for construction and operations of the nuclear power plants was uh, in large set by well, the Ministry of Economy and within the government. However, when these kind of uh, standards are being decided. There are, of course, many different experts, nuclear experts and so on, debating on this. However, the influence on these experts by the utility companies is so strong. So this means that, for example, if there are very strict regulations in place, this means a much higher cost for the utilities. And so these experts and the standards that were set in, and this is what I have especially learned from uh, studies which have happened, investigations later, is that the standards were set at a level which would be high enough to say to assume to keep safety, but still low to try and keep the costs also as low as possible, as cheap as possible. It's very rare for the leader of a country to change their position. 
in the middle of ruling. That's exactly what happened with you when it came to your position on nuclear power. You were for nuclear power, and then you turned against while you were still a sitting prime minister. Before March 11 and the disaster, I was uh, holding the position that if the safety should be, could be ensured, then we should continue to utilize nuclear power and nuclear power plants. But as you, as you said, uh, this position changed. The Fukushima disaster brought us on the verge of having to evacuate 50 million people, and we were only just one small step away from perhaps facing this kind of situation. So thinking about how to avoid such a risk, such a situation happening again, of course there are many technical suggestions and opinions in place, but if we think also of the risk which is posed by, for example, when we consider what happened with the terrorist attacks of 9-11, it's impossible to totally prevent any kind of uh, accident or disaster happening at the nuclear power plants. And so the one way to prevent this from happening, to prevent the risk, to get rid of the risk of having to evacuate such huge amounts of people of 50 million people, and for the purpose, for the benefit of the lives of our people and even the economy of Japan, I came to change to the position that the, the only way to do this, what was necessary to do this, was to totally get rid of the nuclear power plants. I wanted to step back. Um, when you were weighing evacuating Tokyo. You had the communities closest to the plant not yet evacuated. Uh, the American embassy said Americans should leave. Other international, uh, other foreign governments told their nationals to leave. But Japan, uh, you, the prime minister, did not tell those people at the closest areas like Futaba. The mayor of Futaba himself evacuated um, that community. Why? So at the time, uh, the measures which are in place in the case of a nuclear disaster is what is first supposed to be done is to set up a local control center where the local governments, local municipalities gather on this off-site center, as we call it, in the case of an earthquake, for example, to decide what to happen, or in the case of the nuclear disaster. However, because of the earthquake, it was not actually possible for these people to actually gather at an early stage, and also because of the high levels of radiation. So this meant that this off-site center was not able to function as it should have in the plan. And so what did happen in order to decide upon the policies for evacuation here, how to do this, was those who gathered at the Prime Minister's office, so the NISA and also the TEPCO and experts and so on debated this. In particular, uh, Mr. Watanabe, who was in charge of the uh, Nuclear Safety Committee, was giving advice about this. And upon the advice of Mr. Madarame is how this decision and the policy was put in place for uh, the evacuation. And so upon hearing reports of the fact that the cooling functions at the plant had stopped, the first thing that we did was to evacuate those within the five kilometer radius of the plant. And then from here expanding to the 10, 15, 20 and 30 kilometers, giving instructions for people to remain indoors. And this was done straight away on the days of March 11 and March 12. And so upon the advice and recommendations of experts as we were thinking how to set these evacuation zones and when and how, one of the considerations was that if the broader evacuation zone had been set right from the beginning, then those who were living closest to the plant because of transportation and congestion may not actually be able to leave the area. And so the decision was made to first evacuate those closest to the plant so within the five kilometer zone. And then from there, we gradually expanded to 10, 15, 20, and so on. At the time, I had been hearing also, and we were aware of the instructions which had been given, for example, by the United States Embassy and the embassies of other countries for their citizens within, for example, 50 miles to evacuate. However, in the case, of course, from the position of the Japanese government, there are so many citizens living within this area. So to move this number of people all at once was something we had to really consider how this could be feasible. Mr. Khan, can you explain what the nuclear village is? This is the, the strongest pressure group politically, socially, and in terms of even influence on the media, the most powerful of this kind of network, shall we say, and even now having huge influence. 
Do you think the nuclear village brought you down? 私自身が退任をすることになったあの理由。In regards to the reason why I、uh, left the position of prime minister, I don't believe the influence of the nuclear village was necessarily so strong. More than that, the problems within the party and within the diet were more the reasons for this. But if we were asked whether they had zero influence, well, considering that I changed the policy and I put forward the path to nuclear phase out to zero nuclear, and because of this, there was various misinformation and criticism which was put forward by the village against this. And so I could not say that there was absolutely no influence at all. You've said that the meltdown at Fukushima was the most serious accident in the history of mankind. More serious than Chernobyl? I believe that the nuclear disaster at Fukushima was、uh, and of one of the, well, was definitely the largest, most severe of all nuclear disasters, including going above Chernobyl. The reason for this, as I mentioned before, is the accident itself in Chernobyl was, of course, immense, but it was one reactor in this case. In the case of Fukushima, we have the meltdown, the melt through of three reactors. And not only this, but the high number of spent fuel、uh, pools. Also, and even now, radioactive materials continue to be released in Fukushima, and this is having a very long-lasting effect that will continue from now. So, because of this, I believe that the disaster at Fukushima was larger than that of Chernobyl and is still continuing today. Do you think that the food and water of Japan is now safe? First, the food and water of Japan is now safe. First, the food and water of Japan is now safe. First, the food and water of Japan is now safe. First, the food and water of Japan is now safe. First, the food and water of Japan is now safe. First, the food and water of Japan is now safe. First, the food and water of Japan is now safe. And so that which is actually going for sale or to market is only that which has gone through this monitoring and testing and has been declared to be within the safe standards. And so because of this, I believe that the food which is available on the market is safe. However, when we consider that there is still the issue of contaminated water on the site of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant being unresolved, and the fact that decontamination efforts are continuing, but in many places this remains insufficient, while it can be said that perhaps the food which is actually going onto the market is safe, we cannot say that the situation has returned to as it was. Is part of the reason for the push for nuclear power, even after Fukushima, do you think it has to do with nuclear weapons, with developing plutonium? まずあの今。In regards to considering countries which are considering or wanting to build new nuclear power plants, I believe that there are two main reasons for this. One is in the situation, particularly of countries which are, for example, at the moment reliant on buying natural gas from Russia, wanting to be not controlled or not having to completely follow Russia for this, but to be energy independent. And so, for example, the country of Estonia, which did actually de decide not to build its nuclear power plant, but is、uh, perhaps one example. Of this. And the next major reason, I believe, is also because, of course, if nuclear power plants are built, this also does lead to creation of plutonium, and so this leads to the latent capability to create nuclear weapons. And so, having this is also one reason that I believe some countries consider building or having nuclear power. So, keeping the future possibility of this, and this is a reason which I think cannot be denied. Months after the nuclear meltdown at Fukushima, you went to the 66th anniversary of. The U.S. atomic bombing of Hiroshima. It was August 6, 2011, that you went for the memorial service. What is the connection between nuclear weapons and nuclear power? Well, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the memorial service was held on August 6. Uh, well, first of all, in regards to the anniversary、uh, memorials of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I participated in these as almost all prime ministers of Japan do every year. So attendance at this ceremony was not necessarily because or connected to Fukushima, but something which is、uh, occurs every year. However, of course, there is a fundamental connection between Fukushima and Hiroshima and Nagasaki between nuclear power and nuclear weapons. The technology of nuclear reactors was actually developed, of course, through the Manhattan. Project, and it is through the development of for nuclear weapons, nuclear bombs, that the technology for nuclear power plants came about, and the same technology is、uh, being used within this. So there is this fundamental link between the two.
as well as is through the creation of plutonium. This uh, connects to, of course, the development of nu nuclear weapons, which uh, threaten the whole of humanity, and also nuclear power, which puts all of humanity at a huge risk. So I personally believe, believe that it is important to abolish both of these, both nuclear weapons and nuclear power plants.